Welcome back to Under Oath. Welcome back to Under Oath. Uh, I'm here with my partner, Jeff Coffin. Of course, my name is Craig Lind. Uh, switching topics slightly, well, actually quite a bit uh, in terms of topic switch. Asset forfeiture. Let me give you, let me give you two scenarios that also very refer, closely also related refer to, to a civil forfeiture, which means when the government takes, you commit a crime or you do something, and the government takes your property. Uh, that they believe is connected in some way to that crime. So first example, 2019, a uh, guy by the name of Tyson Timms, I think he sells $260 worth of heroin out of his $42,000 Land Rover. And they seize that as uh, under the civil forfeiture uh, law. And contrast that with a, a gentleman by the name of O'Malley, who was on his third or fourth DUI, and they seized his uh, 2014 Chevy Silverado valued at $31,000, which seems weird because I don't think any uh, Chevy could ever possibly get that much money. But, okay, if, if they say it's worth that much. Because uh, I have I'll, a Ford 350 dually and I well, do what I want to do. Ford's, you know, just completely outclass Chevys. But that's pr that, that's for a different show probably. A much different show, but go ahead. So what do you think? Guy sells heroin out of his uh, Range Rover. They seize it. Court says that's excessive, but it's not excessive to take the DUI guy's uh, Chevy Silverado. Why, why, why the difference do you think? I think this is a, a penalty that's attached to a crime, and I don't think it's appropriate because there's no limitation to it. For example, uh, is there an amount? Is it limited to 10? Is it limited to 20? Is it limited to 50? Can it be a million dollars? Can it be $10 million? Now, the Supreme Court ruled against this in 2019 and said, no, you can't do this. It has to be associated and it can't be so ridiculous. I sell $250 worth of drugs. Uh, should I lose $40,000? Now, let's say I was on the street and I want to give this perspective. If I'm on the street and I do it and then they go, well, guess what? You sold $260. We're going to... Your core cost fees and fines are going to be $40,000. We would go, no. Clearly excessive. Clearly excessive. But you can take my crap that's worth $40,000. It's the same thing. Originally, the idea was, okay, I'm using a plane to transport lots of drugs. You know, I have a million-dollar plane. I'm transporting. The, the sole purpose of this plane is to transport a ridiculous amount of drugs. In this case— the Land Rover was not meant to transport two hundred and sixty dollars of heroin. So if 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 I were to give my take on it, the, the the Land Rover was not an integral part of the criminal activity that was being conducted. So you don't need the Land Rover no. to to sell the two hundred and sixty. No, you can sell it off a bicycle. It's not a boat. You're not bringing the drugs aboard. And if you You're sold two hundred and sixty, I have a Lamborghini. It wouldn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't necessarily help with the crime. But the the DUI guy kind of get that one. Because that was the, the instrument. The that's the instrument that you're using to commit the crime of DUI. You got to have the drunk, but you got to also have the driving. It's a thirty-one thousand dollar penalty. Unfair. Is thirty-one thousand dollar penalty too excessive for your third or fourth DUI? Yes, because we know the, the first penalty is like five thousand. Okay, the total penalty you're talking about with with attorney's fees and everything else like that. You're not well, talking about that, the fees no, and costs. We're talking about whether or not the Fees and costs 000. and the third DUI probably are, are no more than $2,500. Now, you're going to charge somebody 31000 and it could be anything. Oh, what if it's a Rolls Royce? Oh, it's 200000 It's three hundred. dollars So what a if, third DUI in a Lamborghini be different than a third DUI in a in See, a when you start having to make that deduction, you realize the path is screwed up. You shouldn't be on that path. You shouldn't ha say, hey, listen, we're going to attach certain fees and fines to this, but we're not going to arbitrarily start taking things that we can't limit. So what's the limiting principle? When can, when can law enforcement, in your opinion, rightfully seize assets, irrespective of their value? You know what? I don't think they should be able to. What if I have a semi-truck and I run an entire load of marijuana from Mexico City. Ten tons of marijuana. Yep. How about we do that? Ten tons Ten of marijuana. Ten tons of marijuana. And I do it every month. Same truck. Every Doesn't month. Matter. The penalty goes to the person. It doesn't go to their property. Well, it's a criminal enterprise, Jeff. 
Okay. I got a driver. Talking, I got are you talking organized? You keep trying to change the facts to make it okay to take my stuff. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, at what point? That, How bad right. does it have You're to right. get? I do, I do does keep changing get? the facts to see at what point, in your opinion, does it rise to the level of, yeah, you can take the stuff. And now I'm going to take you back to 1999. <laughs> you and I are Prince? public defenders. Oh, oh. All yeah, right. close enough. All right. We're public defenders. Would you trust a single prosecutor to do right? to do fair, to be fair about how they do things. In fact, we had many <laughs> prosecutors who looked us in the face and goes, you know these guys are scumbags and everything else, and then the guy gets arrested on the side of the road for hitting a girl. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. I remember so that. We, Is the question, cannot... do I trust the people that we encountered? No. Oh, you're going to trust randos? Um, at some point, though— I do think that you can seize assets. So if you have a farm and all they're growing is marijuana and all of their assets are being used to, to transport the marijuana from one point in the United States to another point, yeah, I think I think the whole thing goes. Everybody's in on it. You got people working the field. You got people working the warehouse. You got people packing and loading. You got drivers and they're all in on it. Yeah, I think you can take all of that stuff. Some guy who happens to be driving for Coors and he decides, okay, I'm going to take some pot down to my friend in Texas because I'm, I'm going back there. and forth. Yeah. yeah. You shouldn't be able to take the and semi And who there. makes that decision? Well, that's the problem. Somebody we have to trust. Prosecutors. No, we. I don't trust a prosecutor. I don't trust these guys at all. We know they have political ambition. We know they do things. We know they have money issues. They have everything else. I mean, Casey Anthony was a perfect example of this. They knew they couldn't prove that case and decided to go forward. All they had to do is charge her with child neglect or anything else like that, and she would have done five, five years. But they couldn't do that. You know why? Because it was political. And that's what this thing is. They're political crimes. People are bouncing off. You and I, when we used to do criminal offense, remember the organized crime where they said the accountant – should have known that the guy who was selling insurance, uh, one out of every 2,000 policies might have had a problem. And he was looking at doing five to 10 years, knew I nothing. Remember, yeah, I remember. And it's all because a senator wanted to get elected. The viatical scam, I remember it. So, and we don't have viaticals in the state of Florida because of it, because of political purposes. And when you're on that level, you're seizing assets, everything else. You're looking for the next job. I want to be the state attorney. I want to be the governor. I'm tough on crime. I want to be a judge. So you know these no people. No situation then, according I can't trust to you. Them. No situation. Unless, unless a jury can make that decision. Unless we say we're going to create so a leave separate it up crime. To a jury. Jury, we think I that would this rather is have related. the opportunity okay. to fight in front of a jury rather than – because here's where it goes off the rails. A case happened in Atlanta the other day. Guy gets on a plane. He's got $3,000. He wants to buy a car in California. Uh, some TSA Yahoo, because we know how solid these guys are, some TSA Yahoo says, oh, I think this is a problem. Uh, we're going to confiscate this money. You're going to have to prove that this isn't for criminal reasons. He has to hire an attorney. The attorney costs more than $3,000. He can't get the attorney's fees back. The money comes back, but he's already given it to the attorney. Yeah, that's criminal. It's not. No, nope. yeah, nope, it's our government. Criminal. That's disgusting. It's our government. So I do not trust a single government entity not to abuse their power in a situation where they're taking stuff. Right. So if they're taking it, it's, it's like an automatic fine without you having any due process. Exactly. And what does what does the Constitution say? <laughs> it's an unlawful taking. I agree. And I don't like it. And it's does, and I'm not saying all prosecutors I agree, but, are, but, are bad, but I'm but, just saying, saying you know who you are. You're, you're saying that you could get behind the civil forfeiture if the prosecutor had to make a case to a jury that this was involved as part of the criminal enterprise, and then the jury decides, yes, it was. And if they take the assets and they're taken wrong, that the government has to pay you. Pay you back with interest. Exactly. I guarantee they wouldn't take nothing. <laughs> well, they wouldn't be bothering with $3,000. They yes. might take a $42,000 Land Rover if you're uh, if you get if your you attorney's fees paid. 70 pounds of heroin in it. Party's over. No. They have to pay attorney's fees. They'd be Oh, here's your money. But they do it now because they can and they're bullies. And I don't like it. And that's why lawyers exist. We don't exist because oh, we're just money grubbing people. We exist because well, people to make your need point, our help. To make your point even even stronger. Uh, a lot of times, uh, the 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 people who who seize the asset use it for for uh, things 
uh, for their department that really aren't necessarily related to law Police enforcement. Police auctions, things like that. Well, no, not even that. I mean, they buy alcohol with it. Um, a Zamboni, in one instance, was was purchased. With, I'd like to drive a Zamboni. I bet it's calming to like clean the, the ice, ice melter. <laughs> just to clean the ice. Just I wonder what a police department needs a Zamboni for, though. Can you imagine? Um, you and I listen. So Why we, we have law Zamboni? enforcement listening to right now. I love a lot of you guys, but you know some of you guys are nuts. So you know, I guarantee at least half the force is going. I'd love to drive that Zamboni down the street. Can you drive it on the street? Uh, it has wheels. You you lift it up. The part that cleans the ice, yeah, it lifts up. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. I'd love to drive. It, it, it would drive really slowly then. Yeah, maybe. Probably. I, mean, I I've seen those pick up. So yeah, maybe. have you yeah. where? Yeah, when they're moving real fast to get it off. Oh. Yeah, at the Tampa Bay at yeah. Tampa Bay Lightning game. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yeah, not the cheap ones we have, like with the solar bears, but I mean, like the <laughs> like the good ones. Where they got the push ones. <laughs> yeah. Where there's four guys behind pushing the back of it. And their rubber shoes? No. 